when you bust a nut. Thank you so, so, so much for the overwhelming support I have received lately. Jesus Christ! Please leave a like if you enjoy this video, as it really does go a long way in helping the channel, and of course, comment down below to be featured in the beginning of the next video. With that said, let's roll right into this one. Before Crash would fall into the evil clutches of other developers, Naughty Dog would have one last run with the box bashing boy left in the tank. The tank. Get it? It's a racing game. And it was a perfect tribute to the Crash Bandicoot franchise, even going as far as to tribute the dumbass decision to play the cutscene laying out the plot after waiting around on the home screen for 30 seconds just like the first game! WHY?! WHY?! Anyway, so this green asshole emerges from the depths of space to challenge our cast of anthropomorphic pals to a race for the fate of their planet. And from here you pick from 8 different characters, 4 good and 4 evil. <laughs> I should have picked Dingo Dial, but of course I picked Crash because I'm a basic bitch. So Aku Aku gives you the lowdown on how the hub functions. Welcome to the Adventure Arena. Uh, you can travel around this area and practice. Aku Aku gives you the lowdown on how the hub functions, what the map means, all that jazz. Your main objective across all the tracks is, of course, to race for first place. Obviously. And winning a certain amount of trophies in an area unlocks a race against that area's boss, with each boss, of course, coming from preceding crash titles. There's also relics, tokens, and crystals you race for, but that's not important until later on. I really like how there's no hand holding tutorial. Though my dumbass probably could have used a bit of hand holding since I didn't even figure out how to use the power boost until halfway through the game. Yes, I know Aku Aku tells you how to, but I was on Discord and had the game muted, so SHUT YOUR FUCKING MOUTH! They just send you off and give you this big open area to practice in before heading into the races. I've never really played many kart racers in my day, but I mean, these controls are as good as they can get in my book. They're for sure an INSANE <laughs> improvement over this garbage. It's so incredibly satisfying to smoothly transition from jumping and slipping and sliding and boosting around corners. There's clearly a very high ceiling for how much you can hone your skills. However, earlier on, even when I drove like a brain dead simpleton. While of course there's a difficulty curve, it never felt like I had to master these crazy moves in order to keep up. You can casually drive around or really crank up the jets and the game won't punish you here nor there or in between. Okay, maybe they'll give you a little sh- <laughs> Plenty of the maps are incredible, with the only one I didn't like too much being Tiny's Arena, which has more bouncing than an episode of Fake Taxi. But tracks like Dragon Mines, Papu Papu, and Hot Air Skyway each offered great fun in their own unique way. There's tracks like Sewer Speedway, Oxide Station, and Blizzard Bluff, which really grant you the luxury of zipping and sliding all over the place at addictive lightning speeds, so long as you keep timing your boost correctly. And even though it wasn't up my alley, Tiny's Arena is admittedly great for practicing those jump boosts. Maps like Cortex Castle and Polar Pass also include really cool homages to the series' previous entries, like using spiders to drop down and block the racers like the Dark Corridor levels from Crash 1, and the fact that the sky is red and rainy like Slippery Climb. Or how about how the bear from Unbearable in Crash 2 is frozen in this block of ice? Serves them right. <laughs> it's a shame they don't show the same respect to the bosses who aren't quite up to par. You call that racing? Forget about it. Who you have to defeat in order to gain keys to unlock the next group of races. Normally I go over each boss in detail when I review a game, but they all function the exact same way here. They just spam drop items until you pass them, and once you do, you've practically already won. I beat literally every single one, even Nitrous Oxide, the final boss, on my first try. Speaking of those items, there are plenty of those different power-ups to grab around the track from breaking crates. There's your explosive crates, which you drop behind you. Heat seeking missiles, basic speed boosts from turbos, invincibility masks. Many of the different abilities can be enhanced by collecting 10 Wumpa Fruit, like TNT turning to Nitro, and a shield which is at first temporary, but once you're juiced up, lasts indefinitely until you're hit. While we're on the subject of hitting things, how about those GODDAMN TIME TRIALS, which you have to complete to race Oxide again before ridding the world of him for good. They're a great chance to learn shortcuts scattered across the map before you have to race around the tracks again, collecting the letter C, T, R. Grabbing these letters and coming in first place while doing so will unlock Gem Cup races, and for each cup you come in first for, you unlock a new playable character, all of which being one of the bosses you faced previously, and the last one actually being Fate Crash, which is a really cool little easter egg. I could cry about Brio and Koala Kong being excluded from the roster, but the real crime here is including Polar and Pora, but not the Hog from Crash 1. Justice. It's a shame that Oxide isn't unlockable as well, but apparently that's due to technical limitations with the PS1, so that's droll. On the bright side, Josh Mansell delivered his bounciest, wackiest soundtrack yet. He also provides unique tracks for the hub areas, which transition together very smoothly. 
And when entering the final lap of a race, the music ramps up to really get the blood pumping. To my people. Something else that gets my blood pumping for all the wrong reasons, though, are these crystal challenges, where you have to race around the track gathering 20 crystals before time expires. Luckily, there's only four of them in the game, and it only took like 20 minutes to do all of them, but I was just glad to get them over with since actually racing is what I came here for. Shocking, I know. But after enduring everything the story mode has to offer, they give you a really cool ending with the whole where are they now thing for the character. Uh. Not only that, but you get a scrapbook filled with all this different concept art for the Crash games, pictures of the Naughty Dog staff, pictures of Crash being revealed at E3 1996, and more. It's really, really cool. But you're not done there, as you can also do this other time trial mode, and if you race fast enough, you get to take on the ghost of Entropy. If you can beat Entropy on every track, break out the board a limited time at Outback Steakhouse, then you unlock him as a playable character as well. And after beating him, you can race Oxide and repeating that process against him will unlock the scrapbook you just saw on the main menu. First of all, <laughs> second of all, no fucking thanks. There's other multiplayer modes to delve into, or at least there would have been if I had friends. So for now, this is the end of this review and the end of the road for Crash and Naughty Dog together. While the bosses were weak and the crystal challenges broke the pace for me personally, that's all safely disregardable. This game absolutely nails what it was meant to be good at mouth anime. To put the Wumpa on top, the nods to the other Crash games are really, really cool and a fantastic tribute from Naughty Dog to the series that put them on the map. Crash Team Racing was a perfect send-off. For the race.